parts of automobile engine carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons, and NOx are specified by federal law. This control is accomplished in part by precise adjustment of the carburetor idle mixture. But just as important to you is the effect the adjustments have on engine performance and drivability. For some time now, you have achieved both the correct emission levels and good drivability by using an exhaust emission analyzer. This important service instrument will continue to be your main diagnostic tool for adjusting idle speed and mixture on all pre-1977 vehicles. Before we get into what's new, let's understand one thing clearly about the idle adjusting procedure for different years. In every case, use the idle set procedure and specifications given on the emission label attached to the car. For almost all cars through 1976, that means using your exhaust emission analyzer, since most labels give you a carbon monoxide percentage to work to. Incidentally, for 1977, you're going to see a greater variety of emission labels. In passenger cars alone, you'll find cars with labels for federal standards with catalyst, California cars with catalyst and air pump, Canadian cars with catalyst, or maybe without catalyst, trucks with or without catalyst. Then there are labels for cars built for use at altitudes below 4,000 feet and others for use above 4,000 feet, and different labels for different car applications, such as engines equipped with electronic lean burn ignition systems, and so on and on. But there's good news, too, in that most emission labels will carry a quicker and easier new method for setting idle speeds and mixtures. It's called propane enrichment. The main reason for introducing propane enrichment is the new carburetor designs we'll have for 77. These carburetors are engineered for leaner mixtures, which are harder to read on an analyzer. The propane-assisted method gives you a simpler way to do the same job. The tools for propane enrichment are really simple. A standard propane bottle, a special tool with a metering valve that allows fine adjustment of the propane flow, and an accurate tachometer, since idle speed rise is the only measurement you have to make. Let's see how propane enrichment works. Every engine has a specific curb idle operating point. For example, on a particular 360 cubic inch engine, it's at 700 RPM with the mixture set to produce 3 tenths percent CO. Also, every engine has a characteristic response to increased richness. On a typical engine, the RPM will rise to a point, then decrease as the mixture becomes too rich. You know this as the speed drop effect. With today's leaner carbs, you'd probably have to remove the limiter caps to get the carb rich enough to use the speed drop method of adjustment. With propane enrichment, that isn't usually necessary. Here's what propane enrichment does. Adding propane to the engine in increasing amounts builds a uniform RPM rise as the mixture becomes richer. And when it gets too rich, the speed drops. This curve from 700 RPM to 810 RPM shows the correct speed rise with propane for a particular 360 cubic inch engine. But let's say we have the same engine and propane enrichment gives us a speed rise to only 780 RPM rather than 810. This indicates the mixture is already too rich by some amount beyond the desired 0.3. Now, if we had a speed rise above 810 RPM, that would indicate a mixture that was too lean. Let's review that. If the metered propane charge causes too much engine speed up, the engine is too lean. If the metered propane charge causes too little engine speed up, the engine is too rich. Adjustments to achieve the specified mixture and idle speed are easy to make. Let's go through a job, step by step. Warm up the engine on step two of the fast idle cam to normal operating temperature. Install a tachometer and connect your timing light to number one cylinder. Kick off the fast idle cam and remove and plug the distributor vacuum hose. See that the timing is at specification. Reconnect the vacuum advance hose and proceed promptly with the idle adjustment. With the engine at curb idle, transmission in neutral and air conditioning off, 
Attach your propane hose to the carburetor nipple for the heated air door hose. Replace the air cleaner, open the main propane valve, and slowly open the metering valve. Watch the tachometer as you very slowly increase the propane flow. Continue to increase the propane to get the highest RPM possible. If you feed too much propane, the speed will drop, so watch the tack and repeat the propane adjustment to get the maximum speed and leave the propane valve open at that level. Compare the RPM rise you get with the specified enriched RPM figure on the emission label. This 360 engine is specified to go from 700 to 810 RPM. If it does, plus or minus 10 RPM, close the valve, remove the tool, put the vacuum hose back on, set the fast idle to emission label specification, and you're through. But let's say you get less than the specified RPM rise, say 780 RPM. Here's what you do. With the propane still flowing, adjust the curb idle speed screw until the engine is at the specified enriched idle RPM. With that, you've set the amount of airflow through the carburetor by adjusting the position of the throttle plates. You should recheck the propane feed at this time for maximum RPM gain. And again, adjust the engine speed to the enriched RPM figure with the curb idle speed screw. That takes care of the air part of the mixture. Now, turn off the propane at the main valve. The engine speed will naturally drop and stop falling at some point above the correct curb idle speed because the mixture is too rich. Now, you will adjust the mixture screws to bring the RPM to the curb idle specification shown on the emission label. Do not touch the curb idle speed screw again since you have already set the correct throttle blade position. Adjust slowly using 1 16th of a turn and wait a few seconds between adjustments for the engine to level out. To get a smooth idle, you may have to try one screw in and the other screw out. If that doesn't work, try the reverse. If you get a mixture that's much too lean or too rich, you may have to remove the limiter caps. But before you do, look for leaks at the carburetor gaskets or hoses, which could give you a false indication of leanness. Once you've got the engine speed to the curb idle specification with the mixture screws, you should be through. But to be sure, turn on your propane source again and see if you get the specified speed rise. If you're not within 15 RPM of your original increase, repeat the propane adjustment from the beginning. If you have to remove the factory limiter caps, be sure to replace them with the new red service caps when you're through. Install the service caps with the tang at the full rich position. For 1977, you're also required to adjust the fast idle to the emission label specification. Although propane enrichment is remarkably easy to perform, you could run into some problems. As you feed the propane in, the engine begins hunting. Check your propane supply. It could be low and feeding gas intermittently. You should be able to feel some by tilting the bottle. Also, be sure to stand the bottle upright to assure a uniform gas flow. Did you check the timing before you started? Retarded timing will cause a hunting condition too. Let's say the engine doesn't speed up when you turn on the propane. Again, it could be caused by a low propane supply. Try a new bottle. Or it could be that the carb's original mixture setting is much too rich. Reset the carburetor mixture screws and repeat the propane adjustment. Propane enrichment gives you a faster, simpler way to achieve the correct idle set for best emission control on most of our 1977 vehicles. Although the propane method does not replace the exhaust emission analyzer entirely, you'll find it an efficient new procedure that adds a lot to your service capability. Oh yes. How about that propane? No open flames in the service area. Okay?